God to the world. God bless you. I'd like to welcome all of our viewers to the Go Ministry program. I am Pastor Kevin E. Richardson, and I have the distinct pleasure of having with me today Pastor Manuel Johnson. He is a remarkable man of God, someone who I have known for approximately a year, but have come to recognize as having a godly character and being an individual who has a heart after God, a longing and a desire to fulfill the purposes of the kingdom. He is one who understands what it means in the sense of occupying until Jesus comes and establishing the rule and the reign of God in the earth by the furtherance of the message of the gospel of the kingdom. And so today we're going to have an opportunity to share with you and experience with you what God is going to bring forth through revelation through this man of God. Um, I've had an opportunity to minister with him and to be in services with him and to be in his churches. And one of the things that I can say is that he walks in the presence and in the power of the Holy Spirit. And I just like to introduce him to you by allowing him to do his own introduction in regards to himself, his ministry, and various aspects of his life. So at this time, Pastor Emmanuel, would you go ahead and uh, introduce yourself to our viewing audience? I just want to thank you, uh, Pastor Kevin, for inviting me here. It's an honor and a pleasure. My name is Pastor Emmanuel Johnson, and I thank the Lord. But first and foremost, I must say, I'm also a child of the Most High God. And it's a wonderful privilege and an honor to be a child of the Most High God, Jesus. And so, Pastor Kevin is invited here, and it's an, it's an honor to be here, Pastor Kevin. I want to thank you. Uh, the Lord has allowed me to minister, I minister deeply more on the gifts of the Holy Spirit and intimacy or walk with the Lord. The whole purpose of me being born again, Kevin and many of you that are watching, is that we can have a divine relationship with the Master, with the glorious Father. And I tell you, when you allow His precious Holy Spirit to have His way with you, it's, it's a, what I call an everlasting honeymoon. Everlasting honeymoon. So many Christians, Pastor Kevin, have not even experienced this thing. Last night, we were ministering, and the Lord told me, and He's been ministering to me, He said, my people need to understand the difference because we talk about the Holy Spirit a lot. Mm -hmm. And saints, there's a lot of, there's a huge difference. And if you'll give me a minute, Pastor Kevin, I just wanted to give them the foundations. <clears throat> Many times we're in service and people are getting information every week, information. The minister is preaching, we're getting information, information. Maybe an hour or two hours, depends on the service. Mm. That when you do the survey, 80, um, excuse me, 90% of the people every week that go into the house of God is receiving information. 5% of that, 90%, mm -hmm. is receiving revelation. Mm -hmm. As I talk or as you talk, mm -hmm. they're getting information and all of a sudden something would hit them and they went a little deeper, mm -hmm. got a little revelation from that. Mm -hmm. And these things are good. But Pastor Kevin, not many of them are getting transformation. Uh, amen. Many people are not experiencing a transformation of the Holy Spirit. Mm. We go in, we, get, we go to the service, and the first thing we do with information is, I know the, the people that receive information, they go, Pastor, great message. Mm -hmm. 
What was it about? Mm -hmm. They don't really know. Mm -hmm. This great message. Mm -hmm. All then the then the five percent that gets that that gets a little revelation. Pastor, that was a great message. Mm -hmm. It it moved me. Uh, some things happened. Mm -hmm. You know, I I went a little deep. Then the third one is the one, the transformation, where they remember the day, the hour that, that the word of God went in and penetrated. Mm -hmm. And you only see a handful of people in the Bible mm -hmm. that was transformed. Mm -hmm. For example, if people say, what are you talking about transformation? Mm -hmm. Look at Moses. Look at Joshua. Mm -hmm. Look at Elijah. The man was so trans transformed that even when he died, his bones was anointed. Mm -hmm. He was transformed mm -hmm. by the power of God. Paul tells you and I that we have to be transformed by the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. And we are not seeing that, but if we saw that in the church today, the world would be a different place. Mm -hmm. But if the world is seeing the same thing in the world, they sing it in the church, there's no transformation taking place. Mm -hmm. There's no way you and I, as the Bible tells us in the book of Matthew and Luke, and Luke, mm -hmm. that we could be a light on the hill if there's no transformation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what, Pastor Emmanuel, what is really phenomenal about transformation is seen in the writings of the gospel. Mm. The Bible reveals to us the fact that Jesus was literally transformed. That's right. In the presence of his inner circle. Peter, James, and John. That's right. Went with Jesus to the Mount of Transfiguration. And suddenly he began to be transformed before their eyes. Right. The Bible reveals to us that his raiment, his clothing, <clears throat> became so white that it was whiter than any cleaning agent could have ever caused it to be. That's right. And the glory of God mm -hmm. had manifested in such a miraculous way that he took on the divine nature. That's right. Which was of him. Because Jesus was both God and man. And the Bible says that his face, it shone like the sun. Mm -hmm. That there was this divine radiance, this supernatural effulgence of mm -hmm. glory. Mm -hmm that emanated from his being mm -hmm. because he is full of glory. That's right. And when we think of the concept and the idea of being transfigured, the reality reaches to the fact of how we will actually be one day. That's right. It says, it does not yet appear what we shall be like in reference to what will occur at the time when we are transformed in the moment in the twinkling of an yeah. eye which is in reference to us being resurrected or raptured. But the Bible says that we shall be like him. We will be like Jesus. And the reality is this, is that, as you stated previously, we have information. Mm -hmm. And that can speak to the intellect. That's right. That can speak to a aspect of our sensory comprehension mm -hmm. and our cognitive understanding. And we can have revelation, which is divine disclosure Thank you. of supernatural things. That's right. And that is a divine point of penetration within to the spirit of man that mm -hmm. allows our minds to be renewed because our minds will be renewed through the washing and the renewing and the regenerating power of the word of That's God. That's right. But also the Bible says, be ye transformed. Thank you. There it is. And so... When I hear you speak of transformation, yes. it is the ultimate purpose and destiny that we have as believers. Glory to God. You, you, you hit it on the nose. 
It's almost as if you were in our service last night. You see, in the Old Testament, we saw a transformation where Moses' face had shined. But glory to God, in the New Testament, the completion of the law, you see, as Pastor Kevin was speaking, there was a transformation on the mountain. Moses' face wasn't just shine, his whole body glowed. It was completed in Christ. They were like Christ, Elijah and Moses. They were like shining. And that's where God wants for you and I. The law can only go so far, just ahead. But brothers and sisters, when Jesus is there and you have the fullness of the Holy Ghost, it's not just your face that lights up, it's your whole body. Peter, James, and John saw a glimpse of what God wanted them. He says, this is what your end will be. You will glow like me, brothers. But many of them, they only get information. And Peter was only receiving information and he got a little revelation, but he didn't get transformation on that mountain because he didn't know half the stuff he was saying. <laughs> glory, I'm, glory to God. You know, but you and I, God wants us to be transformed. This year and the years to come, hmm. we don't want just information. Walk out of every service. That was a good service, Pastor. That was a good message. But your, your mind is more on the chicken dinner afterwards, <laughs> then what happened? Brothers and sisters, when the word of God gets in your bones, you're being transformed to the point where you don't make that decision anymore. The Bible tells us that Jeremiah said when the, the word of God was in his bones, he said, well, I'm getting all this pers uh, persecution. But then he says, I'm not gonna speak in his name anymore. But glory to God, he said, I can't do it. It's just coming out of me. It's coming out of me because it's shut up in my bones. Many, many times the word of God only goes to hear. That's information. Hmm. But, if it does, but if it doesn't get in your bones, brothers and sisters, if it doesn't get in your bones, it doesn't have the authority you want it to have. Hmm. As Jeremiah was saying, I'm not going to speak in his word, his word anymore. That po the power of the word of God that was in his bones says, yes, you are. Hmm. <laughs> yes, you are. Hmm. And you're going to go out there right now. And you're going to go before the king. Hmm. And he says, Okay, I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. There's a time in our life where, yes, God gives us decisions, but there's a time in the life where it's all God. Mm -hmm. There was a time in my life many years ago that I had a choice to do this or that mm -hmm. because that's, you know, that's God. He's, he's long mm -hmm. But now it's like, it's him. It's his will be done. Mm -hmm. Not his half of his will or part of his will. Mm -hmm. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You want the Holy Spirit to have total control. Mm -hmm. Many of you haven't heard this, but we say it in our ministry. The Bible says to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I tell the people in our ministry, you need to have wall to wall Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Wall to wall. He's mm -hmm. everywhere. Mm -hmm. Anytime you move around, there it is. Why, why? What's wrong with your feet? That's the Holy Ghost. He's in control of that too. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with your hand? It's the Holy Ghost. He's in control of that too. Mm -hmm. I've never experienced having the Holy Ghost in my bones about, except about 36 months ago. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I was going through a process too of understanding that. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to let it go. Mm -hmm. When that time comes, when he's in your bones, mm -hmm. <laughs> when he's in your bones, mm -hmm. you, you speak languages that you don't even know you're speaking. Mm -hmm. He's controlling your dreams, brothers. Mm -hmm. He's controlling your visions. Mm -hmm. Amen. He control it in it. It's a wonderful leading of the Holy Ghost. Amen. It's a wonderful leading of the Holy Ghost. Hmm. This, this is the reason why, if, if I may, you know, people was like trying to get at, you know, Elijah's bones. It was anointed. Hmm. The man was dead. Hmm. And this guy that laid on him was not a born again Christian. It was, it was a dead man. Hmm. And he was revived from Elijah's bones. Hmm. He said, well, how, how, how did Elijah have so much anointing? Brothers and sisters, he asked for a double portion. Mm -hmm. That only can come from the Lord. Why mm -hmm. did you say that? Mm -hmm. e Elijah only had one portion. Mm -hmm. Elijah said, I want a double portion of mm -hmm. your spirit. Amen. He said, That's, you, had, you, had, you asked a hard thing. Why? He can't do that. A man can't give it. It comes from the Lord. Amen. Amen. It comes from the Lord. Somebody is watching me now and watching this program. And they're saying, 
it's many of you right now. And well, how do I get that Holy Ghost where it's all over me, where I'm getting transformed? Brothers and sisters, you have to be tired of the norm. Hmm. Tired of every week just getting information mm -hmm. which sounds good on the, in the port pit or which sounds good on television or which sounds good from the radio. Mm -hmm. I am not coming down on anybody. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying transformation is what the world is looking for. Mm -hmm. We have to be set apart. Mm -hmm. Most of the information that we're hearing right now, you can get that on Google. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Holy, the Holy Ghost <laughs> can give you a couple of things. But to be transform, transformed through the Holy Spirit, you cannot get that on the computer. It has to be God's hands himself, Pastor. You know, one thing you said earlier, Pastor yes. Johnson, you talked about Moses. Yes. And Moses was arguably one of the most extraordinary individuals in biblical history. Yes. He spent an inordinate amount of time yes. literally in the presence of God. This is true. Imagine 40 days in the presence of God where you're supernaturally sustained. You don't have to eat. And one of the things that you begin to become aware of when you read about Moses' encounter with God is that Moses reached a point relationally with God when he said to God, I, I want to see your glory. I want to see your essential, your true nature. And so, God literally took Moses and he hid Moses in the cleft of a rock. Mm -hmm. Now the rock was Jesus. Yes. And in its symbolism, in its type. And God told Moses, he says, I'm going to allow all of my goodness to pass before you, which is in reference to his glory. One of the definitions of glory is the concept and the idea associated with goodness and it also carries the concepts of splendor and beauty and weight and other defining words but just imagine someone who throughout the years of being the pastor of three to six million people and talking with God on a daily basis in what was called the tent of meeting where God's presence would supernaturally come down mm -hmm. and it would be before him and God would talk to him face to face but Moses got to a point where that was not enough for him and he says you know I'm talking to you but you're shrouded I want to see you as you are and so God says okay I'm going to allow you to see the afterglow of my presence when I pass by because if you enter into my presence in the totality of your being then you will be transformed you your life force mm -hmm. will be supernaturally taken because of my overwhelming presence right and, and I want to share this briefly I had an experience in the early 80s and it was my common practice to go into my living room and to get on my hands and uh, on my knees and bow before God in praise and adoration and thanksgiving. But God spoke to me this particular night before I began my time of intercession and worship and praise and he says, you don't know me. Now, <clears throat> I got saved in 1975, had a very miraculous conversion experience, so when God spoke that to me, in my ignorance and my lack of divine revelation, I thought it was the enemy, I thought it was Satan because I knew I was saved. So I went into my living room and I began to go into my time of worship and suddenly, bam, the room exploded. It exploded with a brightness that was beyond trillions of simultaneously exploding suns. And I found myself literally on the couch, crouched up in a protective position, in a fetal position. And it felt as if the whole of my being was going to turn into billions or trillions of atoms and fly in multiple directions simultaneously. I was dying. I was not dying because of evil, but I was dying because God had come in his raw power and presence, his holiness had come in such a dimension and realm where my flesh 
was, was not able to tolerate it. And so I began to cry out, go away from me, go away from me, because what I felt at that moment was not only the power of his presence, but the reality of my wickedness, of my sinfully inherent nature. Like Peter said. And God's presence gradually rescinded. And that was a transformational point in my life, in my relationship to understanding the infinite holiness of God, his purity, the beauty of his holiness. And, and that's what we're talking about, that's having right. that encounter with God. Thank you. We're, we need that encounter because as Pastor Kevin was ministering, he gave and drove it home. He was doing his prayers, thanking the Lord, and heard the voice, the audible voice, you don't know me. You don't know me. So what was like 10 years afterwards, or you've been born again? Well, I've been saved a Christian for 40 years. But that encounter? But that encounter happened, happened oh, probably maybe 20 years ago now. And, but but, I've had, you, but you were saved, right. but yet many years afterwards, you hear this voice that says, you don't know me. And, and you know the knowing. Do you, that, 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 that is so profound. Mm -hmm. Saints, do you understand what, what we're trying to say here? Most people are reaching for the hand of God. You can't know him by his hand. You can receive from him, from his hand, but you know him by his face, by his seeing his face. There are so many believers are this year alone asking for the hand of God. I need this done. 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 And many people don't know God. They know what he can do for them as far as fulfilling their needs. Some of us, we can do that even in our sleep. But how many of you are asking, Lord, I want to seek your face. Your face I will seek, says the psalmist. How many of you understand what that means? God desires a divine relationship with you. As Pastor Kevin said, things have to be removed from us. God wants to do that too. So you can draw closer to him and he can draw closer to you. We're living in tough times. Seriously tough times. And we must be under the shelter of the Most High. When David spoke in Psalms 91, brothers and sisters, that was a relationship. He stood, I was telling my wife a week ago and a week after that, I said, what, was, what is the difference, honey, between the kings of Judah and David? Why did God tell David, he is a man after my own heart? Well, there's several reasons, but the one that drives it home is this. Those kings after him, Pastor Kevin, was born into the kingdom. David was not born into the kingdom to be next in line to king. He went through the wilderness. Brothers and sisters, he paid the price to be the king that God says, this man is after my own heart. Even Saul did not pay that price. David was willing to go to the wilderness. He was willing to be around midfits for about 17 years and raise them up. He was willing to do order and justice in the wilderness. And he was a fugitive being chased by the king himself. Glory to God. You know, Pastor Emmanuel, <clears throat> I'd like to know what the Holy Spirit is speaking to you in just some brief bullet points about 2015. Okay. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit is calling the remnants in these last days. It was the remnants that was able to go not to the fire, but go through the fire. It was the remnants 
that God had to remind Elijah, you're not the only one. I got 7,000 that will not bow or kiss Baal. The Bible tells us in, Paul, in the New Testament that it's their remnants that God is looking at. It's the remnants of the Jewish nation, the third, the one third that will be saved. It is the remnants. God is raising a remnants. If you look through the history of the Bible, God, it was the remnants that God would choose, whether it be one or, or a few or many. It's a remnant. It's the remnants that the Lord is ministering to. I see that. You are a remnant. I'm a remnant. You have the Christian community. But brothers and sisters, where is the remnant? It is the remnants that saw the glory, the transformation. Even in the disciple, the 12 disciples, there was a remnant that Jesus would take, two or three, when he did powerful moves of God. It was a remnant. You want to be part of that remnant this year and next. He says, Lord, show me the remnant. It's the remnants that you see that are not hanging out, you know, in the places where everybody's going. It's the remnants that God will say, turn left, turn right. Go to that church corner there. What? Go over there in that, in that place. It is the remnant. You want to be part of the remnant. The Lord has dealt with me. I've ministered this, this to my people. Or should I say God's people? They're not my people. And they're his sheep that the Lord says, be in the remnants because that's where my presence and my glory is going to show in this world. Pastor Manuel, in reference to speaking into the lives of our viewers and con concerning the revelation that God has given yes. you regarding the remnant and, and their yes. place and their position and yes. their purpose in, in this year, yes. could you pray according to the leading of God and the Holy Spirit and, my pleasure. and bless us so that we can receive not just information, mm. not just revelation, but transformation? Those that are watching us right now, if you're able, put your hand on the screen or lift us lift it up and surrender to the Lord. And ask the Lord, I said, Lord, I'm give you, I'm giving you right now my body as a living sacrifice for you. I don't like that old man. I don't like that old woman. I left them in the past. I've left them there. I want to be transformed by the renewing of my mind, body, and soul through your precious Holy Spirit. Calling all pastors right now. Ministers, men and women, evangelists. Stop preaching the same message and let the Holy Ghost renew you in the mind. Be transformed so the people under you will be transformed. Receive it right now. There's power right now going through the airways. Many of you right now are being touched. Many of you are being slain by the Holy Ghost and you can't get up. That's because there's a transformation taken. Because now the Holy Ghost has total possession of your body. Receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'd like to share with you the fact that when I had that experience of the manifest presence of the glory of God exploding in my home, that the glory of God became resident in my home in an extraordinary way from that time on. The only way I can explain it to you in simplicity is to say that there are times when you have visitations of the presence of God, but there are those times when God's presence becomes a habitation in your dwelling. And that's transformation. When God comes and dwells with you, abides with you, in his presence. And that presence that is dwelling there now is something that is continuously manifesting transformation in me. You cannot experience the presence of God without being changed. That's right. You cannot encounter God and be the same person that you were before. When you get saved, the Bible says, behold, Old things pass away. That's right. And all things 
become new again. And so to you, my viewers that are listening, and to those of you who are longing for greater intimacy and fellowship and communion with God, <clears throat> to move into the realm of transformation is a desire. God says that he is a rewarder of those that seek him. That's right. God tells us that he will give us the desires of our hearts. He says, if with all of your hearts you truly seek me, you shall surely find me, thus saith the Lord. He says to us that if we draw nigh unto him, he will draw near unto us. So it is the longing and the yearning and the desire for God that begins the transformational process mm. in our lives. And it is the continuance of that. We must be as the deer who is panting for water, who is so thirsty and so driven with ravenous desire that he finds himself at the point of longing, even to the point of death, for a desire to have his thirst quenched. And God can quench your thirst. So in closing, I'm going to just simply ask Pastor Johnson to pray a very brief prayer in regards to your spiritual hunger being ignited as we close. Heavenly Father, I just pray right now that the viewers that are watching, the hunger, the seekers, Lord, that they will experience a mighty transformation of the Holy Spirit. As what took place in Acts, as we know, people they minister and they said there was impartation. No, that was a transformation that took place in the upper room. Those that were in the upper room felt like they were in the throne room when the Holy Ghost did. That was a transformation. He visited over 500, but only 120 got the transformation. 380 got information and saw some revelation. B, the remnant, the 120. And I pray right now that this will be the most explosive year in the Holy Spirit that you've ever experienced. I'm excited, Holy Ghost filled, thanking God for what He's gonna be doing in my life and in your life. You all be blessed in the name, the glorious name above all names, Jesus Christ, Yeshua. Hallelujah, amen and amen. God bless you and God be with you until we meet again. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah.